Over the thousands of years it's been here, it's known many names and many people. Gichigumi, the Grand Lock, Lake Superior. It's the largest and perhaps most fearsome of the Great Lakes. And for more than a thousand years, it's been home to the Ojibwe Nation, including the Red Cliff Band, who still live along its shore in northern Wisconsin. Gichigumi, Lake Superior, is, is life to us. It's water, it's food, it's a means of travel. We couldn't culturally be who we are without Gichigumi here and all the gifts she gives us. Today, the big lake is facing an even bigger threat, climate change and the warming water that comes with it. And a new proposal near the lake's edge is threatening to make the problem even worse. Environmental groups in two states are fighting a proposed $700 million natural gas plant for Superior. They're putting resources at risk, which are not theirs to put at risk. Superior, Wisconsin is a community shaped by the lake it's named for. Once a thriving industrial city, today Superior faces high levels of unemployment and a declining population. Pastor Bridget Jones leads a Lutheran congregation here. She says the city is still feeling the effects of deindustrialization. 1910, we had a lot more people, and now the decline has just started. So now we've lost 10,000 people over the last 100 years. And you can really see it in some of the stores that are closing. So two years ago, when a pair of utility companies from Minnesota and Wisconsin announced plans to build a massive fossil fuel plant in Superior, Many saw it as much needed economic development, but as Jones and others would soon learn, that development would come at an environmental cost. These corporations are not looking out for us, they're just looking out for their bottom line. The $700 million natural gas plant, known as the Namaji Trail Energy Center, would be built here along the banks of the Namaji River, which empties into Lake Superior. The plant would emit three million tons of carbon dioxide each year over an expected lifespan of three decades. That fact has caused many to speak out against the proposal at public meetings, including Izzy Latterman, who's part of a local group of youth activists called Friends of the Climate. The climate crisis affects everyone, so this is all of our futures that this um, gas plant will be affecting in the long run. The utility companies call the plant a backup option for renewable energy sources, but experts say that doesn't add up. We've actually conducted a study for the state of Wisconsin showing that we can get all of our electric power from in-state sources that are renewable and that there's not a need for investing in fossil fuels. Dr. Jonathan Patz is the director of the Global Health Institute at the University of Wisconsin. He was a lead author for the International Panel on Climate Change, which won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. Patz says the only way to avoid a dangerous rise in global temperature is to stop building more fossil fuel plants. We have to cut all of our greenhouse gas emissions by 45 percent by the year 2030. I mean, really quickly. So we can't fool around with building more infrastructure to burn more fossil fuel. But already, changes in climate are becoming more obvious to the people who live near Lake Superior. Climate change has affected our harvest seasons. It's really apparent. The way we name our months is what we're getting to eat at that time, usually. And it um, doesn't seem to be lining up as much anymore. You know, Lake Superior is one of the fastest warming lakes. Climate change as a whole are really going to affect this area. 11 years, if we don't make a huge change, we're going to see catastrophic effects. In South Superior, the Namaji River is running wild, spilling over banks, spreading out for blocks. In 2012, 2016, and 2018, Superior was hit by massive storms, each time unleashing more than 10 inches of rain in a matter of hours. Scientists say storms of this magnitude should only come around about once every 200 to 500 years. Northern Wisconsin has seen three of them, in the last decade. The record flooding and the erosion that comes with it could be a major problem for the power plant, since the site where it's scheduled to be built lies on a steep slope down to the river. 
And in order to build the plant, the utility companies would have to destroy about 70 acres of wetlands, what scientists call one of nature's most powerful tools to mitigate the effects of climate change. They can act like giant sponges on the landscape, and so during a storm event, they can absorb lots of water. Instead of that water immediately rushing downstream, it is slowly released over time, which has the effect of mitigating um, and reducing downstream flooding and erosion impacts. For now, the future of the power plant is in the hands of state regulators. The utility companies say they hope to have it up and running within five years. But opponents of the plant say they aren't giving up yet. The risk just makes this a really bad deal. The amount of investment, $700 million, in this fracked gas plant is going to prevent that kind of investment in renewables, which is really what we need to transition to now. Climate change is real, and it's happening now. It's already affecting us. You know, we're not waiting for a miracle. The solutions are there. We need to get off of fossil fuels as soon as possible to avert dangerous changes in the climate. They don't realize what they're doing. It's, it's going to hurt people. It's going to hurt our plants and our animals and our waters. They can't speak for themselves, and we rely entirely upon them. We all got to live on this planet together, and what one does affects the other. We're trying to do our part to take care of it for your kids, and I want them to do their part to take care of mine too.